Christopher Thomas. I'm the chair of the Sugar House Community Council. And yeah. And thank you all for coming this evening, trustees and members of the public. Uh, tonight is a really important meeting, and we're really glad to have you with us to help make a really important decision, both for Sugar House and for the future of the city and how we get around it. I'll have more to say about that in a moment, but I um, wanted to go ahead with a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, I want to say that I apologize for, for missing last month's meeting. Um, I was sick and was not able to attend at the last minute. Hello, can you? Oh, oh. Hello, hello. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. You can hear me okay? Okay, just let me know. Oh, no, I didn't turn it on. Oh, okay, there we go. Is that any better? <laughs> First of all, I want to say, I apologize for missing last month's meeting. I was sick and wasn't able to attend it. I just want to thank Amy Ferry for sharing the meeting. And I heard, I heard some nice comments from folks. Well, um, Amy's glad you're back tonight. <laughs> <laughs> glad, to, glad to be back. Um, and um, I also wanted to make an announcement. I want to invite you all to attend. There's going to be a combined subcommittee meeting on April 15th at 6 p.m. That's the Land Use and Zoning Committee, the Transportation Committee, and the Parks and Open Space Committee. They're all going to be together here, 6 p.m. on April 15th. Members of the public are more than welcome to attend that meeting. In fact, it's very helpful because in those committee meetings, um, they can dig into some more depth and detail that we can't necessarily do always at the, the big community council meeting. So please come to that. I also wanted to say that tonight we have a very modified agenda. And the reason is that we're trying to allow a lot of good um, information sharing and good questions about a proposal for the streetcar alignment. Um, and we've structured it in a certain way to try to get a lot of input on some very specific questions in a very short amount of time. So I'm going to add, uh, that's going to be a fairly structured conversation. I'm going to ask for your, your patience in, in moving through that in a pretty structured way so that we can get a lot of input, like I said, in a very short amount of time. Yeah, Robin, are, you, are you good? Yeah, it took a village, but OK. <laughs> so, Robert, I'm going to ask so, um, about 10 minutes, if you can. And then we'll do questions, and I'm going to go ahead and leave the question. So I'm going to go to the trustees first, and then I'm going to go to the Great. Thank you so much. Please give your attention to Robin and the presentation. Hello, hello, everyone. It's always a pleasure to see a packed room. It gives us a great opportunity to share information with you and get your feedback. My name is Robin Hutchison. I'm the Transportation Director for Salt Lake City. And the first thing I want to do is recognize the whole team that's here to support you tonight to make sure that we get you information and, and hear from you. Uh, so I'm just going to point out our team. We're, we'll all be helping to answer questions in a moment. We've got um, Ed Butterfield and DJ Baxter from the Redevelopment Agency. John Nepstad, who is our technical consultant on the project. We have David Everett, the Mayor's Chief of Staff. Uh, Lead Council Member Simonson is here. Sean McDonough from the Mayor's Office is here. And if you work for the city, have I missed you? Did I miss anyone? Art. Art Raymond is also here uh, with the Mayor's Office. Uh, so we have quite a team. This is a really important project to us, and it's very exciting. <laughs> I'm going to try and talk for 10 minutes and stop, and uh, they get your questions. I was dared to do this, and no one thought I would. <laughs> uh, we, were discussing, we were discussing whether people in Salt Lake City understood what we meant when we said streetcars. And largely, we feel like we haven't put enough information out there about what it is and what it's not. So we're going to start the discussion today with what it's not, then we're going to move to what it, what it is, and then we're going to talk specifics about the current study that we're working on. So it's obviously not this. This is a freight train. So streetcars are not a freight train running through your community. Uh, but many of you have this in mind. This is, this is tracks. This is what we know. Um, and this is not what we have in mind either. 
So this is this is what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a dedicated right-of-way. It's separate from the street, separate from the cars. There's usually a park and ride station associated with it. Um, it has a very big, high platform with a large canopy. It's extremely um, visible, a little bit obtrusive, and designed to go very fast. It's designed to carry people as fast as possible from point A to point B. Now this is not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is introducing a new mode into Salt Lake City. And I'm going to give you first some information about what that mode is. Um, and if the chair would help me, if there are questions during the 10 minutes, what would you like me to do? Oh, I'd, I'd like to hear you. You, you have to slow down and speak up and enunciate very clearly. We are in quite a dead space back here. And we're very eager to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Uh, and we're going to hold questions until after the... No, I appreciate knowing that you can't hear me because I can definitely talk louder than not seeing. <laughs> I got it. Can everyone hear me? Raise your hand if you hear me. Yay! We're going to keep going now. All right, so maybe you're no tracks. It goes quickly. But we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is a different mode. It moves slower. It works in many different kinds of environments. Here we have a picture from Portland, Oregon. We know we're not Portland, but there are some very interesting examples there. This being one of them, a streetcar, a smaller vehicle running at a slower speed, moving through a pedestrian-oriented plaza. We have another picture here that shows that it works within the street environment. It is, as you can see, uh, supporting a major amount of development, and that is one thing that it does. It supports development and redevelopment very, very well. But it also supports smaller scale. This is just two stories. This is a residential area. A streetcar runs through this area equally as well as it does um, in the more developed. It is built for a multimodal environment. Again, this is an example from Portland. Cars, people all over the place. It runs with cars in the street. This is an example from uh, Berlin, Germany. And here you can see that there are uh, creative ways to incorporate not just cars in the streetcar, but also cyclists. And it can be in tight environments. So uh, recently DJ did a, a quick analysis and said in northwest quadrant of Portland, which is where the streetcar is, how wide is the street? How wide is the limit east? Just for example. And they're about the same, it's about 33 feet. And here we've got the streetcar in the lane. We don't have to change the configuration of the car lanes at all. It's quieter. In this picture, people are actually enjoying a conversation. It has level boarding. Oh, thank you, great. It has level boarding. People can enter and exit very quickly from the streetcar. It's a quick on and off. Oh, it took him up. Ah, there we go. Um, again, runs with traffic. This is a very urban environment. This is San Francisco. Now I showed you the station about light rail. Nothing could be more different about this station here. This is just a curb extension, and this is what we envision for Salt Lake City. The curb is simply extended. Parking may be removed for a few spots in order to make that happen, but it actually creates a nice pocket for parking uh, just on either end of it, and most of the parking on the street is maintained. There are interesting things you can do with pavement. In Tacoma, they've decided to put papers down in their trackway. It fits, as again, into a variety of settings. This is a very historic setting, also from, from Germany. So I'm like this, this is Carl's room. Where my mother grew up. Yes, I know. <laughs> and it is actually a very minimalist type of um, type of mode. This is another picture from Berlin where they didn't even build the stations. It, it's a quick hop on and hop off. I don't think we'll do that here, but there is uh, there are examples out there. Just a couple more here. So we're talking about something different, and it's time to start getting excited about this mode, um, as we are. Because the very first one's going to open in December. How many of you have been involved in or know about the Sugar House Streetcar, the Phase 1 project? All right. I don't have to say too much then. 
Phase one opens in December. This is Greenway next to Streetcar. This is extremely visionary. I do believe we're the first in the country to do this. This will open in December. 65% constructed. Exciting to see. It's time to start thinking about what's next. Um, this map, uh, I was actually going for an all pictures, no words presentation, but I thought it was important to include some of this information. Uh, the blue dashed line that you see, the end of phase one is right here at McClellan Street. And I think we would all agree that this is just short of the central business district of Sugar House. And I think we all agree we want to get to where it's very visible in the center of Sugar House. So the purpose of studying the extension is what is the best way to extend it into the central business district of Sugar House and looking out a little bit beyond that as well as to what makes the most sense. Am I doing on time? Five more minutes. Great. So the study, it was a combination of robust technical analysis and extensive public outreach. Um, does anyone remember the very, who, did anyone attend the workshops that we had where we laid maps out and you got to use magic markers? Well, good job. Yeah, and a few in the back too, that's great. Uh, we asked for a ton of input. And this is what we got. We asked, the sky was the limit. You put the line on that you think is best. Where do you think streetcar should go? We then uh, took it through a very technical process and we uh, narrowed it down to these alignments here. The white dots represent station areas. And then finally, through uh, the most technical or most rigorous of stages in the technical analysis to arrive oh, at, uh, at our recommended alignment. Let me go back. Uh, this isn't even all the meetings and the outreach that we had. There's more. We, we just haven't added to the slide. It's probably bad that I have done it. Um, we just haven't added all the meetings to the slide, but there are numerous. We've had numerous meetings. And in addition, this is the attendee sign-in sheets from our workshops. There's almost 200 names here uh, over th a series of three open house workshops. Um, and I, I think we're, we're really pleased with the amount of feedback that, that we got. Okay, so let's talk about the recommendation. Then I'm going to try and answer some of the technical questions that I know that you have. Um, we have divided it into 2A, 2B, and 2C because funding is difficult to get. We want to be sure that if we can go ahead and build shorter segment, segments, that we can. That we've planned ahead to potentially build it in pieces. So the 2A goes uh, directly east to Highland Drive. Does everybody have a good orientation of their map? Okay. This is the end of the line of McClellan Street. This is Highland Drive. And the first piece is just a short hop to Highland Drive. The second piece is what we call 2B, and this would travel to the monument. Now on this map we show it turning into the monument, but I know one of your concerns, I've heard this from a few of you, is whether or not it has to go into the monument. And the answer is that it, is, it does not have to go into the monument to serve the monument area. And this is something that we can look at more carefully during the engineering process. So just to orient you again, this is the monument area here. And then third, the recommendation is to extend north to 1700 south. Now this would serve uh, Westminster, here's Westminster College, 1700 south is right here. Um, and the commercial area that is on 1100 East. We tried to look at this with some regional context. So what you see on the map now is light rail in black, streetcar extension proposal in orange. So this would be the university tracks line, We've got the north-south line. This is phase one of the streetcar and the extension here. And then we try to also look at it in the context of what's happening in Sugar House. So every um, purple dot is something that is either underway or about to happen or already exists in Sugar House. Okay, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, I am aware of some of the more technical questions and I think I'll go ahead and try and answer some of them and still take question and answer after that. 
Um, we had a question about some demographics and uh, what, what it is we considered as far as population and employment, and what went into some of the forecasting that we used to evaluate the alternatives. So I'm going to show you a couple maps. I'm glad I have the pointer for these. Um, this is 2007, the next map is, shows growth to 2040, and I'm going to point out where you are. This is Sugar House here. Now this shows the household density here. And if I flip to 2040, this is the density. It densifies just a little bit for the number of households. Uh, this one's a little easier to read. This is side by side for uh, employment. On the left is 2007, on the right is 2040. This information comes from the U.S. Census Bureau and is used in conjunction with uh, the Wasatch Front Regional Council um, uh, information they use to project uh, trips as they're doing their planning for regional and local transportation. So the next, another question that, I, that I, I received from a couple in this group is um, how did we look at the ridership? What is it that we did to determine the ridership? And you know, there's books, there, is, there are books on this, there's whole conferences devoted on generating ridership. Um, our team used um, not just state of the practice, but actually leading edge of the practice and is now being requested nationwide to do this process in other communities, most recently in Detroit, but also in Los Angeles. Uh, there are numerous other communities that are now doing this. Um, it's called direct ridership forecasting. You don't have to remember that part. What you do need to remember is that instead of looking at it from a perspective of, of how does this little mile do among all other projects in the whole region, we want to know what happens around each of the stations that generates ridership. It's a better way to look at what's happening in our local community. So based on information that we have from Portland and Seattle and Tampa and Little Rock and all the other streetcar communities, we now know what the highest correlation, the biggest relationship between what's happening on the ground and what puts uh, riders on streetcars. We then apply it to our local conditions. Each dot is a station area that was studied. Each uh, Easter egg color is a walking area of about a quarter of a mile, and we take the data and information that's included in that quarter area walk distance. And we generate ridership <coughs> based on, my notes are on my screen, so I can't see to go uh, without notes. Um, based on primarily uh, where people live and where pe people work. Uh, we also look at it uh, in terms of what the characteristics of the line are. Is it a long way to the end of the line? Is there, are there a lot of transfers that affects ridership? Uh, and those are the basic pieces of information that we use to determine ridership. Robert? Uh, yes, 10 just, minutes? Yeah, go ahead and wrap up. Okay, last question we had is a uh, streetcar in the plaza. This rendering actually shows the plaza without the streetcar. So the plaza is still looking at it both ways. That's it. That's what I have for you. <coughs> Thanks. Great. Thank you. And you, can go ahead and, you can go ahead and stay right there. Okay. I'm just going to grab my agenda. Oh, sorry. Okay. So at this point, um, oh yeah. What I'd love to do is um, turn it over for questions to Robin from the trustees, and I want to do this um, for the next um, 10 to 15 minutes. And then I'm going to go to the audience for some questions, but I'd like to start with you all. So, Larry. Thanks for the presentation, Robin. I just wanted to ask, uh, since <coughs> currently in the city we only have one east-west light, light rail route, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> are there plans for another east-west <coughs> opportunity or is this option going east on 21st South the only option we have? Can I uh, clarify, do you mean for light rail or for just transit in general? Well, uh, I'm a little confused because th this trolley, uh, I don't know if it's used for commuter traffic or not, or how much of the ridership is commuter people. 
but it seems to me that the east-west connection is very important. Um, I agree the east-west connection is very important. I think this will go a long way to, to helping provide another east-west connection. Uh, it's not that it can't carry commuters, it's that it might take an extra couple minutes uh, to get where you're going because of the frequent stops and the slow speeds. But it is definitely another east-west connection straight to the cross-platform connection at the track station on the west. Yeah, is this slower than a bus? In some instances, yes, and in some instances, no. But I think the thing to keep in mind is it's as slow or fast as the moving traffic on the street, which is the same as the bus. Yes? If the streetcar did not, if phase 2B did not terminate in the plaza for the turnaround to be in the plaza, what would be the options before we move on to uh, 3A or whatever the next phase is? Um, I think we would look at stopping just short of or going just beyond uh, 24 south. Yes? So in your calculations for ridership, then when you looked at where people live and people work, did, was there any kind of value assigned to the park in that um, radius since nobody really lives there? I mean, some people sleep there, but <laughs> they don't live there. And it's very you know, difficult to model. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about the park a little bit. I know that you have questions about that. Um, first, let me say that there are very few models in general that account for parks. So our regional model, the West Central Regional Council, they do the regional model for transportation, does not pick up parks, does, it, does not account for parks. Reason being is that they're unpredictable trips. Uh, they happen seasonally, they happen at odd hours, um, and they don't tend to generate as high a ridership number as other more predictable patterns like where people live and where people work. Um, that being said, we took a shot at parks, um, and when and at John, just please jump in if you want to. If you want to answer, I'll start. You you jump in. So the modeling, uh, the methodology that's used considers a whole range of factors at first and looks for the highest correlations. And basically, what we saw in other communities, which defines a lot of the correlations, is that parks do not. They were not. They generated riders. Certainly, they generate riders, but not as much as other things. Not as much much as some of the other higher factors for ridership generation. So in the final round of analysis, the regression analysis that was used, the park was not included because it wasn't the hot, one of the highest um, corollaries to, to streetcar ridership. Yes? I, I think that everybody, well, everybody, but I think that the, the common consensus is that the center of Sugar House is 21st South and higher. It's the mind. Okay, if we're, we are talking about, there's the one possibility to make it a terminus, the other is to, but it would be critically important to me that there is a, whether the, whether the, the whether it's a terminus and at, 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 at the monument or whether it goes uh, up 11th or east on 21st, that there is a place, there, there's a stop, there's a place for individuals on the corner of 21st and Highland at the center. There's a stop there. If, if there's not, I think we're destroying the whole we're missing. If we go up Shopko, there's that's not the center of Sugar House. The center of Sugar House is there, and please either make it a terminus or go up 21st, or but allow people to get on and off at the corner of 21st South and Highland Slash. Uh, it's right in there. Yes, and, and I'm sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier, uh, and that's good feedback, but I want to still try to keep it to be questions, and, and fairly short questions. Yes? Sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure you were playing. Is there an overall plan? If it goes down 11th east to 17th, is there a plan at some point where it would connect with the tracks line on the university's side, so there'd be a connection on the east side. So if, say, someone from Sugar House 
wanted to go somewhere on the east side, they don't have to travel west, come around to get there. If I had two more minutes on my presentation, what I would have said was, um, the city is actively pursuing and starting right now to look at a network plan for the whole city. We had originally thought this was just a streetcar network plan, now we realize that we have to have a transit network plan. And it's there where, where we will study the more broad connections throughout the city, and you can expect to hear back from us again soon on that. Yes, Rollins. Well, uh, I've lived in Salt Lake City so long, and I used to ride trolleys. I just want to make sure you, there's a question. Is there a question at the end of this? Okay. So there's a question. Yeah. The, uh, there was a streetcar every two blocks. Every place there is a bus route was a streetcar route. There we go. You got no man. So, uh, and you never had to, to walk. If you use Wasat Front Regional Council about north-south routes at every track station, we should have an east-west route. You got it? Fourth, ninth, thirteenth, twenty-first. Well, it's a question on And it goes clear across the city. <laughs> it doesn't go to Sugar House. I need a question. <coughs> the gavel's falling. What, what are we doing with, with a street car? It's nothing special. It's just like a bus. And it should run on a bus route called the East West 21st South Bus Route. Okay, so I understood the question why streetcar? Right? Okay, why streetcar? It's a good question. We get this. We get this often. Streetcar is. So, streetcar. That's not a number. Please allow the answer. So, streetcar, um, it's pretty unique. It has a, a capability of fulfilling two needs. One is a transportation need, and that is neighborhood connectivity and neighborhood mobility. The other is. Um, an economic vitality that it brings with it. Whether that's something that exists already that now has additional pedestrians and passengers, um, or the spurring new development which you're seeing right now in Sugar House. So it's a, it's a mode that more than bus uh, really does both things very, very well. Yes. Well, my question relates to the questionnaire of the straw poll. Question one, I mean, either it says the pause is either a turnaround or a pedestrian pause. And I think you showed some things <coughs> in Portland where it can be both. Yeah. So my question is, is that a fair question? <laughs> so I don't know how you answer that. I mean, I can see it being both, but that's just me. The question is, is, uh, is it a fair question? And um, yeah, you can ask anything you want. We'll try and answer it the best we can. And I think we have developed some plans that show the streetcar in the Monument Plaza, still uh, recognizing, understanding that the community wants it to be a gathering place. It's a smaller gathering place with the streetcar there, but, but it's still a gathering place. And we also have, we're working with concepts, that don't show the streetcar in there. And to be, you know, to be upfront, we had originally thought the streetcar would go into Monument Plaza, but this is something where if we hear your concerns, there can be reevaluation, and the streetcar can still go to this area and not have to be in Monument Plaza. Yes. Um, back to the question about the park and generating ridership. Has anybody considered that there are a lot of bust in high school students so that go right past there all the time on a regular basis, even on the weekends? Has that even been thought of? Uh, that was considered when we were looking, we were comparing uh, the schools that are on each end of the alignments. Um, and I'm going to start to answer this, but I may call on John and John's memory. Um, we uh, so we looked at Highland High and the number of students, faculty, and staff at Highland High, and we looked at Westminster and the numbers of student, faculty, and staff at Westminster. 
So for starters, the number of student faculty staff is higher by about a third at Westminster. Um, in addition to that, uh, we see this at the University of Utah a lot. College students have a propensity to ride transit almost more than many other user groups. So that's, that is how we considered it. Did I get it? Not there. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so um, my question is like, when I try to think about the, the plaza, the monument plaza, and the streetcar going through it, what I immediately wonder is, is this something where, I mean, how the fact that you've got a track and you've got cars coming through and safety and mm -hmm. all of that, and like, even like the tracks, um, you know, lines, you're not supposed to walk across them even. So I'm just wondering, how does that work with the streetcar in this kind of environment of a plaza, a pedestrian plaza? Well, we're working through that right now on phase one. Um, and these have been uh, long conversations with the Utah Transit Authority to reshape the paradigm of how we're going to build transit with the streetcar. And what we've come to an agreement with, with UTA, is that this is different, and we are allowing people to walk on tracks. Uh, so there's a plaza area, um, there's a plaza area at each uh, stop on the, on the phase one section, and the, the tracks are embedded. They're completely embedded, there's no ballast to walk up and across, it's, it's a completely flat, flat plaza that we, um, we will definitely allow and encourage pedestrian activity. Now, we, it has to be safe, first and foremost, we care about safety. <coughs> and we want people to be aware of the trains, uh, but because trains are moving a little slower, um, and because people know that they're in a different kind of environment, we feel we can uh, construct a very safe project. So I'm wondering what the noise level would be in the streetcar on the plaza, and how frequently it would be coming in. I need to know those things before I can decide how to sure. go. Uh, so two questions were noise and frequency. Um, noise coming into the plaza. Streetcars are generally quieter, no matter how big the vehicle is, because of the speed that it's running, the braking distance, how it brakes, they are generally quieter than a light rail vehicle. And you're running one car, not four cars, so it's not as loud. Um, but it's a turning movement. And where you get more noise on a streetcar is when it's turning. So I, I don't have decibels to give you, but I do have a small heads up that when it turns, it makes a slightly, slightly more noise. Um, frequency, we are still finalizing the phase one frequency. It'll be somewhere between 15, we're either going to have 15 minute peak hour and 30 minute off peak hour, um, or all day 20 minute. So we're still finalizing that, and whatever happens on the phase one will likely be yeah, on phase two. Okay, I'm going to do one more trustee question, if there is one, and then go to the members of the audience. Well, I, thanks for coming, Robin. I, we have a great team working on this, really. I'm, I'm pleased. And thanks, to everybody, for coming. Um, as far as I, I heard years ago that the cars that were going to be purchased were the same cars, the Siemens S70s mm -hmm. that are on the main track, and then later perhaps go to a more conventional almost San Francisco-ish sort of streetcar. Can you fill us in on what those plans are currently and, and including the length of the cars? Sure, um, you're correct. The very first vehicles that will run on phase one is a Siemens S70. Um, the Siemens S70 is an interesting vehicle because in some markets Siemens sells it as a light rail vehicle and in other markets they say it's a streetcar vehicle. <laughs> Uh, so Atlanta, for example, just bought this as their streetcar. Uh, so it's, a, it's actually a smaller, slightly lighter light rail vehicle that doubles as streetcar. Um, one of the reasons we're using these is because they are available to us right now. We received a grant to build phase one. Uh, we must be in operation by the end of 2013, and we are thanking our lucky stars that the Utah Transit Authority had three vehicles that they could start running um, on phase one. Uh, they will be single vehicles and they will have, uh, they're actually called skirts on the bottom that make them look a little bit different. They'll have special branding and I'm confident they will look and feel like any streetcar you've ever seen or ridden in Portland or Seattle. The most important thing is how it operates. You slow it down and you stop it frequently and you have plazas, that's truly what makes a streetcar. And the length? 
Oh, uh, the length. I tried to verify as I was walking out the door. You have 81 on yours. I think so. I sent it to John Nazer, our city engineer, and he thought that was correct. So we think 81 is correct. Okay. Thank you. So we've got um, time for a couple of um, questions from the audience, and I would like to again please ask that you make a short question rather than a comment. Yes. I want to know how the car turns around, if it turns around in the plaza. Is it like in San Francisco where they have a big disc that turns around? Is that the way it works? No, the way it works is it's called a bi-directional vehicle and the driver actually walks the length of the car and drives it in the other direction. Got it. There you go. Yes. I'm a business owner and a property owner here in Sugar House. Mm -hmm. And Sterling Furniture on the corner of Lemeth East and, and 21st South. We are very concerned about how long we would be shut down because uh, loss of income with the economy being as bad as it is is not a good thing. So we're worried about that. We also have 31 uh, residents, tenants who live in apartments that we have, how they would have access, and we need to have make sure that the wire, the electrical wire and everything is high enough that our, um, that the trucks that bring in our, our furniture and stuff can, can access that and make the left hand turn or the right hand turn easily with the, with the trolley. Quick response, the overhead wires are typically high enough to accommodate trucks. Uh, we had questions this morning about this very thing, about what happens during construction. Uh, if we had more time, I would give the mic back to Bill Knowles, who is a fabulous resource and has done this for us on a few projects, including most recently the North Temple project. We care very, very deeply about what happens to the merchants. And uh, when this is constructed, you will be uh, cared for to the absolute best of our ability. Yes, I agree. For the Monument Plaza, will there be in either instance of the trolley being there or not being there, a cut-in for the buses to get off 21st South? Uh, there exists one now, and it is just uh, west of the Monument, so we anticipate that that stays. I'm sorry, I realized that uh, maybe there was a dissatisfactory response. If I could, yeah. sorry. Because the, the, there is a stop right now at 21st and Highland. That's the sure. stop I'm talking about. And that, that would remain, yeah. Just in, the, in 21st? In other words, if you're going to be closing off that right-hand turn in the Monument Plaza, then you're going to have a load of traffic on 21st mm -hmm. South making that right turn, and then you're going to have the bus right in the middle of that, unless you have a cut-in. Let's go for a brief response, and then we'll only get two more Sorry. questions from the audience. I, so I understand the bus concerns, um, and uh, we, can look at, we can look more carefully at the station areas as we get into design. But what I wanted to say is that this is not even engineered yet, and we don't know when it's going to be constructed. But I promise you that when we do know it's going to be constructed, we'll have more concrete answers for you about what's going to happen during construction. I want to do a couple from the back. Yes, sir. <coughs> I, I would like to know <coughs> will the streetcar uh, be clanging a big bell or blasting a horn as it goes through an inter intersection? <coughs> I live on Elm Avenue between 9th and McClellan, and on the 4th of July you can hear a firecracker go off down by Smith's Market there, and it sounds like it's right on your front porch. So we worked hard on this one, and the answer is no. There will be no clanging of bells, or there will be no the, the ding dong of the uh, the crossings will not occur on phase one. Now, if someone's in the track, you're going to hear a loud horn, but that's for safety. But uh, no, we've worked it out with UTA, it's a neighborhood line, and we don't want it to be disruptive to our residential neighborhoods. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, which. Whether it goes on 11th or 21st, which is most conducive to the master plan? Are either, or, because like to me the immediate appeal is going down 11th, but if the master plan is to have something on the east bench, it seems like going up 21st is better for that plan. Uh, so that's a great question. Um, 
we, I mentioned earlier that we were going to be starting a master plan for streetcars, and it's not done yet. The reason that we're moving on this now is that we have a window of opportunity with the completion of phase one to move uh, quickly on an extension that really does a good job of serving Sugar House. Um, and the analysis shows that it's 11 B's, um, and we believe that'll hold true as we develop the master plan. So that being said, I, I actually think that when our master plan comes out, and I'm making a prediction here, they're both gonna be very good alignments. But the recommendation for the most near term is 11 B's. Yes, George. Can I just add something oh. quickly to that? Sure. The current Sugar House master plan that was adopted in 2005 does recommend extension of the rail line going east uh, roughly along the 2100 South Corridor. So that's the current policy. This is obviously a change from that policy. Okay. Yes, George. Robin, traffic backs up on 11th East for two blocks right now. Won't the construction and streetcar running, two tracks cars running up and down the street hurt and destroy the small businesses that give our area its character? Yes. <coughs> so I'm going to rephrase your question as um, what will the effect on businesses be of the streetcar? Um, recognizing that construction is a difficult time for businesses and that the city will do everything we can to keep them informed and keep access flowing. Uh, we feel that the streetcar will have a positive effect on businesses once it's constructed by delivering more passengers into the area, more pedestrians, more foot traffic in front of people's businesses. reinstate the two-hour parking in front of Rockwood, is it possible to also have, say, two spots that are for loading, 20-minute loading, so that people uh, working in those buildings can load and unload? Did, did you hear that question, Robin? I did. Uh, freight loading, unloading, Rockwood, um, can we talk just after? That's a fairly detailed question. I, I might be able to help you with that, but I might be able to get, need to get back to you on that. Oh, and I'm going to check the time real quick. We're going to do two more. Yes. Uh, so you mentioned how the, the cars run you know, in the lanes of traffic. And um, you, know, you emphasize the, the, you know, the slow speed and the frequent stops. But in that section of 1100 East, north of 2100 South, that's generally a two-lane road. So the impact, I mean, already the traffic, like, like you said, was was pretty thick, and so if you have a car taking up an entire lane of traffic without the ability to get around that, how, how's that going to impact? Good question. We want to, we, we feel that we need to engineer it in a way that allows the cars to, to move around. Uh, so stations can actually be off the side um, to allow cars to move through. So as we get into the engineering, we're very conscious of that and we want to make that happen. Yes. Um, are you going to have to widen 1100 East, uh, north of 2100 South, uh, number one and number two? Uh, do you have any estimate on how, uh, whether increased traffic, decreased traffic, or, or that will be, uh, traffic will be the same? Uh, first question is no, we don't have to widen 1100 East, except at the very end um, of the line, we need a little, it's called a sliver take to get an end station in. Um, and then uh, your traffic question. So in the Salt Lake Valley, the reduction of congestion and traffic is not, not something we strive for. What we strive for is the reduction of the increase of traffic. So that curve. And we feel that uh, streetcars will have an effect on that by slowing down the increase of single occupant vehicles, which is what generates the most congestion. Got it. Actually, we can do one more question because that one was pretty quick. Yes. I'm just curious about the hours of operation of the streetcar and how much it's going to cost the ride. DJ, <coughs> <coughs> okay, um, hours of operation, phase one. Do, you, do we know yet? We don't know exactly, but we want it to be a seamless, seamlessly integrated with the rest of the UTA system, so I would expect that the hours would roughly mirror the light rail system. 
Oh, and, uh, fair. Sorry, the fares will be. We're, work, we're still working on fares as well. We want that to be also very carefully integrated so you can buy a fare once. Um, that said, we still have some details to work out with UTA on the first phase of the streetcar, but uh, again, we want it to be a seamlessly integrated part of that system. Great. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Robin. Thank you all for being here. Oh, and I wanted to give a little bit of time to Councilman Simonson to talk just a little bit more about the public process that is still unfolding with various issues about the street. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, very quickly, just, just an update about uh, where we are right now and what's going to happen probably over the next couple of months. Well, that's a directional microphone. Go right like that. Yeah. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Soren Simons and I represent uh, District 7, which encompasses all of uh, Sugar House from 17th south down to the South City border, and from roughly 5th East, which is the boundary with the South City Lake. <laughs> up to Foothill Boulevard. So this, this is all within that district and I appreciate you all uh, being here tonight. Um, this, this streetcar project is happening because of this community. And I want to commend you all for having vision and foresight to make this happen. And, and the extension is a very, very important decision for this community as well. Um, the City Council will be the final decision maker about the alignment. Uh, we've been given a recommendation which was presented to you this evening. And that recommendation has, I think, a lot of merits to it. I think, uh, from my perspective, there's some really important missing pieces of information, like ridership generated by Sugar House Park and, and uh, student involvement and, and those sorts of things in the process. Um, but this is part of our outreach effort to get all of that input before we make a final decision. And the input so far has been really, really beneficial. There's still more that we're doing over the next month. There are uh, a couple of very important uh, hearings that are coming up. Uh, the one specific to what was presented this evening is the public hearing that will be uh, with the City Council on the 23rd of April. Uh, that public hearing will begin at 7 o'clock p.m. We just scheduled that a week ago. Uh, anybody that's interested in speaking to the City Council is welcome to come down to the City and County building. It may not start exactly at 7, but it will be as soon after 7 as we can get to this item uh, on the agenda. But if you want to speak, I'd recommend being there at 7. Uh, you'll have two minutes to address the council. If you think you have more to say, then you can say in a couple of minutes. I'd suggest that you send email comments. If you can't make it to that meeting, you can send email comments. We'll be sending out postcards. Uh, to anybody that lives within about a half mile, either of 11th, I mean about a, a, about a block or so, a quarter mile, uh, either up 11th East or up 21st South, which are the two primary routes that are being explored and considered. Uh, we want to make sure that those that are most impacted have an opportunity, but uh, anybody that lives anywhere uh, that may have an interest in this project can certainly come and comment. And you can share your comments with the council. So the general comment line for the city council is uh, comments.council at slcgov.com. And if you didn't get that, I'll, I'll be around to the end of the meeting to help answer some questions and can give it to you again. But it's comments.council at slcgov.com. Um, so that's on the 23rd at 7 o'clock. Uh, it will probably be sometime in the next month, I would guess, after that, that the City Council will be making a final decision as we consider input and, and uh, comments from the community, the recommendations from our city staff and the consultants and, and uh, other input. Uh, one other important uh, hearing coming up, which isn't directly related to the streetcar, but has a lot to do with... Um, bicycle and pedestrian and all of the other things that will interface with the streetcar, uh, which is represented in kind of a parallel study, a parallel document that's been going on with the same consulting team, and that is the Sugar House uh, Circulation and Streetscape Amenities Plan. That plan is being presented uh, for public hearing next week on Wednesday evening, that's the 10th, uh, which uh, Judy Short mentioned earlier, at the Salt Lake Planning Commission, and we anticipate that probably within the next couple of months or so, uh, that will be forwarded to the City Council. So we'll be considering both of those things 
in, in a very short time frame and, and probably going kind of parallel. So they're both very important to Sugar House, and I just wanted to make sure you were aware of both of those items if you have an interest in those things. If, if anybody has a quick question about process, I'd be happy to answer that. Otherwise, I'll stick around after the meeting and we can talk in more length. Uh, very quick question, yes, Paul. Well, if I went to that public hearing, could I get home on public transportation? <laughs> um, you most likely will be able to get there on public transportation. You will not be able to get home, however, if you live in Sugar House, because as you know, the buses stop operating about eight. So get there early, get your card in. You could probably be finished in time to catch the bus, Robin. Uh, I quit riding the bus to city council meetings a year ago because I can't catch a bus anymore. Um, I know there were a couple other hands raised, but could you please wait until after the meeting and, and talk to... If they can wait, I'll stick around after the meeting. I'm happy to do that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you very much. Okay, so we're, we're, we're suddenly upon the main event of the evening, which is the straw poll. Um, and it's actually shrunk a little bit since I did the first draft of the agenda. So we're going to now have two questions to consider. And actually, um, Larry, I'm going to ask for your help with this. So what we're going to do is sort of vote in two different groups. The trustees are going to vote, and uh, our secretary, Cabot Nelson, is going to tally those votes. So if you are a member, if you are a, a, a Sugar House trustee, Cabot will count your vote. If you are a Sugar House member, and that what that means is that all Sugar House residents are considered members of the council, you will be voted. You will also have a chance to vote in the straw polls. And Larry and I are both going to count your votes by hand so that we sort of have an idea that we've, we've got the number correct. So we'll count your votes um, and compare and make sure that they're the same. So let's go ahead with the first question. So that's. I think this is really important. There are a lot of business owners here who do not live in Sugar House, but they have a business in Sugar House. Can they vote? Yeah, yes, yes. That is a great question. And yes, so if you've got a if you're a Sugar House merchant, you're a business in the Sugar House area, yes, please also vote. Okay, so the first question is, what do you want Monument Plaza to be? And we want everybody to only vote for one of these answers. <laughs> now we understand that, you know, may, there may be a possibility that it can accommodate a, a turnaround and, and be a pedestrian plaza, but I think this is still good input um, to try to discern the intent of the community and the desire for the community. So please try to answer this question as best you can, just picking one of the responses. Okay. So, what do you want Monument Plaza to be? I'm going to read through first, and then I'm going to take trustees, and then I'm going to take audience. So, what do you want Monument Plaza to be? A, a pedestrian plaza. B, a streetcar turnaround. Or C, leave it as it is. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead with trustee votes first. Are you ready, Mr. Secretary? I am for the trustee votes. Go ahead. Excellent. So, all those who choose. Answer A, a pedestrian plaza, please raise your hand. One, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All of those. Can I ask a question? You can vote at the next meeting. I can vote. I'm just wondering if my vote was counted. Oh, I trustee. Yeah. 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 Well, we typically recognize the trustee at the following meeting. After well, they've been the bylaws recognized. state the opposite. The bylaws state that as soon as um, the vote goes on, you're allowed to participate in that meeting. No. The way that I read them. No. Um, no. Did you vote for the last, for A? I voted for A, yes. Okay. So uh, I think we can note that, and then we can look okay, at the bylaws. This is actually kind of a straw poll. It's not mm -hmm. something. Oh, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and your vote will be tabulated anyway. And I don't think it's going to be a substantial change. I don't either. <laughs> so so everybody can vote for it. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry if, if we've read it wrong. I apologize. Happy to follow up with you about that. Um, okay, all those who would like to vote for choice B, a streetcar turnaround, please raise your hand. Trustees. I count zero. Zero. And option C, leave it as it is. 
Oh, sorry. We'll get to we'll get to trustees. We'll get to audience members next. But just trustees for this. Okay. Okay. There are no votes for option C. Okay. Great. Um, so, Larry, if you would help me, we're going to go ahead and do the audience members of the audience. Okay. What do you want Monument Plaza to be? If you vote for choice A, a pedestrian plaza, please raise your hand. Five votes for option B, and C, leave it as it is. Four. Okay, four votes. Four votes. Thank you. Okay, we've got one more question. Larry, so I'm going to need you for this one as well. Oh, no, actually, I'm sorry. We're going to go back to trustees. <laughs> Yeah, we'll give your arms a rest. Thank you for holding those up. Okay, we're going back to the trustees. Again, for question two, then we'll go back to the audience. So, for um, question two. Mr. Chair, if I'm yes, I'm just, I was just, if you want to talk for a moment, stand by, I can check the bylaws to answer that question that you had, if you're willing to do so. Or if we should just continue. Yeah. Let's just continue, because uh, I think we've, we've noted the, the votes, and so I think we can t tabulate them in the appropriate bucket if we as you resolve that. But thank you. So, number two, where do you want the streetcar to go? Answer A, east on 2100 south, or B, north on 1100 east. And it's helpful to remember we saw some maps of the various, of the, of the two main directions that were considered. So, where do you want the streetcar to go? Please answer for one of these trustees. Those in favor of answer A, east on 2100 South, please raise your hand. <coughs> and I'm actually going to vote for that one too. Okay, then that's not. Nine answers in favor of east on 2100 South. Option B, north on 1100 East, please raise your hand. Count eight. Eight. I can get two. Okay. Now we'll go to members of the audience. Where do you want the streetcar to go? East on 2100 South or North on 1100 East? Please only vote for one. So all those in favor of answer A, East on 2100 South, please raise your hands. I'm going to count one more time here. <laughs> I 
I got 24, 24 more months, 25 months. Me too. So I think it's 25, <laughs> somebody must have put their hand up the second time. <laughs> so let's, no, 25, 25, 25 votes. Okay, those in favor of option B, north on 1100 east, please raise your hand. I got 19. 19. Excellent. 19, 19 votes for, for number for B. Okay. Oh, please, please also reflect an, an additional five, Mr. Secretary. We have votes via our Facebook and email. Yes, we had some votes via Facebook. And I got so five for A and one for B. Yeah. And I have two emails. Okay, we were doing proxies for the straw poll. Is that what it was? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the public, though. Not I'll trust that. In this case, I'm like, okay. Um, you want me to put them where? I'm going to put them where? I'm going to put them where? I'm going to put them where? Okay. Wait, no, 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 no. 1A, 1B, 1C. I oh, for question number two. Okay. I have five votes for option A. And one vote for option B. Five. Nice. Okay. And that's a yeah. and those, for being again? One. Okay. Thank you. Those came in on Facebook and our email address. Okay. So I can give you back if you want it. I have one for one A. Yeah. Is this Actually, a trustee? Two for one A. Um, okay. Well, one trustee, Joey. And one Person. Okay. okay, so this is her question. So, so we were doing a package. That was two, and now she's giving you one. Yeah, she's giving you one. So, for members of the audience, we've gotten some proxy votes through Facebook, through email, some were from okay. the public, some were from trustees, so we're just sorting it out. Mr. Chair, do you have Judy repeat that? Uh, what okay. was that? Okay, yes. For 1A, I have two. 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 Okay. And for two, I have one for 2B. Two 2B. Two <laughs> <laughs> one plus one. I just wish you guys were saying it's equal. Okay, fine. Was there any, so no votes from anybody outside of the meeting for 1B? Is that what I'm understanding? Correct. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, I think we've got the, uh, the tabulations that we needed. Um, and we did originally have a third question. Um, have, yes, Councilman Simonson. There seems to be a lot of interest in the east alignment. You really only heard one <coughs> recommendation today, and I, I don't know if there is an opportunity to talk about the merits of the 2100 south alignment. I don't know if it would change anybody's opinion or if everybody came here with their minds made up. But I think if, you know, if there's interest, we can make arrangements to present additional information about what the pros and cons are for both of both alignments as opposed to the presentation we had tonight, which really was a recommendation only for the 1100 East alignment. I just wanted to raise that information because I'd be happy to help facilitate getting that information in front of the community if they're interested. Yes. Well, I have, I have built in a little bit of time for some um, council discussion. It's hard to sort of predetermine exactly where the move would be, what we want to do. Um, after we took the straw poll, so let's take a little bit of time for some discussion, um, and I'll go ahead to Sheila. Well, the concern that I have is that we represent Dilworth District, which runs from 17th East to 23rd East, 21st South to 17th South. We have a lot of neighbors that have residential property along that line. That's my primary concern, is that these people have a lot of opportunity to understand exactly what this proposal is, how it will impact the quality of their life as well as their property values. Because I know from my neighbors that live close to me on that, that is going to be a primary issue to at least some of them. Whether they change their mind or they agree with it or whatever, I think having the opportunity to really understand is going to be crucial for support and a really legitimate 
idea of how it's going to impact those people who live on that street. I don't want to live on a street with my house with a streetcar line running in front of it. And I certainly want to have the opportunity, if I had a possibility, to talk about it. And that does not happen adequately too often when we're dealing with planning or whatever. OK, thank you. Uh, other, some other sort of general comments, and then I'll, I'll probably go back to what, what Councilman Simonson talked about. Yes, Just sure. a question, Soren. Uh, the, the two options are north on 11th and east on 21st, and you said there's another one? Well, th those are generally the two options right. that were studied. Um, but they were options what? That, that terminated right in, in the heart of the business district, but predominantly this the extensions beyond Monument Plaza either went north or went east on 21st South. So what is the other option that you're suggesting? Uh, that would be the 21st South option. So uh, let me just That's rephrase. David, so what I think uh, Councilman Simonson Sorry. was saying was the main proposal we heard from the, from the city was really geared toward the oh. next phase going north. But Councilman Simonson is saying you could hear a whole other presentation it oh, just look okay. at sort of the benefits or drawbacks of going east. Chris, okay. can I make a quick, quick clarification? clarification? Yes. I just want to be sure that everybody understands that we made two presentations to this community council with all of the options. And I understand you may want more information, and we are happy to provide as much information as you need about whatever alignment, but I want to be sure that, that you understand that we, we really have an interest in having you understand all of what we studied, and we've, we've been here a couple times um, in an effort to, to, to do that. So. I just want to make sure that, to put that there. Thanks. Absolutely. I mean, I think there has been a lot of opportunity for, for public comment. I also think that sometimes, you know, as a community council, we're focused on sort of the most immediate thing that's coming up. We've had a lot of these issues to really think about weigh in on. And I, I know for me personally, it's harder to think to that next phase so immediately. And I kind of thought that phase was sort of longer and coming. So I think that's why you may hear some you know, a, a feeling of a, a bit of a surprise or, or wanting to know more information now because it seemed in the future. I, I do understand that. We're happy to continue to share information. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, I, I represent the area east of about 20th East, all the way to the edge up against the mountains there. And that includes 2121, which is one of Salt Lake's business districts, and also an area that, um, probably is getting very close to redevelopment. Uh, it has quite a deep uh, lot area, quite a, quite a good footprint can go in there. I don't know if anybody is a business owner from that area in the audience tonight, but in talking with them, um, they would very much like to have it go east because they see it not only extending soon from 17th east I and mean, we're finding out how fast things can move and by the way a little faster than some people ever expected including us and the business community but they also see it as being able to bring people to them from the east and from the south because if you really look at it something's got to be done with foothill and if we can align this master transportation plan across the city to help Foothill and oh by the way the people that feed Foothill from Kimball Junction Park City and, and Point South and 215 that I think um, would really be helped by a line going up 21st South and the business people up there would would love to have the extra number of people coming up both from the west and the east to help support the, those business areas. So, thank you. Yes, other discussion, Rollins. Um, historically, we had a bus going you know, east west on 21st South. The, uh, there were two tunnels under 13th East. And what we had was a, a short line that went to Park City that used the, the route to, to trap the uh, trip. Streetcar sign. The other thing to remember is that we have a bus route called the 213. It actually runs from Mount South to the business district and then that on the front. And it runs either every 15 minutes or every 20 minutes. 
So there's already a route that's running along the limit to extend the school. Thank you. Other, other uh, trustee discussion, I'm wondering if, um, you know, how folks feel about the idea of having uh, maybe a presentation that would look more specifically at the line, a line that would, an extension, next phase, that would run east on 2100 south. Um, I, see, I see some nodding heads. Um, I mean, one thing we could do, I don't know if we're necessarily prepared to do this, but we could, um, you know, maybe take a straw poll on that idea amongst the trustees. Um, or or make a motion. Um, I'm, I'm curious, does anybody want to make a motion or, or how do you feel about doing a straw poll on this to try to gauge that? Okay, well, I don't think we need a motion to do a straw poll. How would folks feel about getting another presentation that looks at, at that 2100 uh, going east on 21 and south option more, in more detail. Please raise your hand. Well, can I clear? Yes. Can we maybe do that at the joint committee meeting on April 15th? Yeah. Do, you, do which part of it? Take the straw poll or have a presentation? Have the other presentation? Well, that's do, sort of short notice for some people who might be interested. Right. That's well, the problem is, Sheila, the city council meeting is April 23rd. Three and they're not going to delay that. And this is part of that? It's not just part of... The no, the city council, problem. the city council is, you know, their own, that's their public hearing, and so whatever we do, we have to do before then, yeah, which is why we're taking this hybrid approach. So maybe, you know, announcing that we always have those meetings on that Monday, April 15th, could be another presentation of all of those joint committees. So, well, okay. my other question is, then, and Robin has a... <laughs> yeah, let's go to Robin. Uh, the draft alternative analysis, which has a ton of information about all of the alignments, is posted online. And that will be very helpful to you to get a head start on whatever presentation you may or may not have. Reviewing the draft plan will help you because there is great detail about all of the alignments that we studied. And I want to make sure that you know it's at shstreetcar.com. shstreetcar.com. It is in the email that you got from me. And it's in the email. So that will be helpful if, you're, if you want to know how each of them performed against each other. There's tables and charts for all the alignments. And let me ask you another quick question, Robin. Yes. If I could. Um, what's, I'm wondering if you could address the, the urgency. In other words, this is sort of a next phase. There isn't even necessarily money at this point. Um, I mean, is there a reason that you feel like the, the council really needs to make a decision on this within the next month to two month time frame? I'm just wondering if you could speak to that. Uh, I think there's there's a couple of reasons why the time is right now. One is that we, uh, we've got dirt flying right now, and if we can take advantage of that, we want to be able to. Um, two is that there are a number of developments that are expecting to have an answer, and along with that, some of the agreements that have been made through the redevelopment agency, it, there's timing associated with their developments, and they need an answer on, on what is happening. Um, three, is that some of the funding that we're going to be pursuing requires that we have full agreement from the city. And we can, we're not even set up to pursue a good many options for funding until there's been um, a decision. So those are some of the reasons. Okay. But what you're saying is that because of the 11 piece came to us, the local preferred alignment doesn't yes. satisfy that piece for that line. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand your question. It, you've done you've done what you have to do for the federal government in terms of the local preferred No, 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 no. The no, city council right has to adopt it. Okay, that's what I mean. Once the city council does that, mm -hmm. that one could go forward. Yeah. But you haven't come anywhere near that close for 21st South yet. Uh, no, we're, no, we haven't started that process for 21st South yet. So can I clarify for a second? Yes. Are we talking about um, 2A and 2B or 2A, B, and C? The extension from McClellan to Highland? Yes, the extension north on... 2 and B3. 2B and 2... A2 and B3. Well, no, no, there's two different things going on. So there's the, there's the numbering and lettering of the questions, but I believe no, no, that she is referring to the, the presentation given by the city that there were the three different um, segments, yeah. 2A, 2B, and 2C. Does that make sense to you, Larry? Yeah, okay. I wrote it down. Yes. <laughs>
So I'm sorry, please go ahead with your question. Well, I, I'm just a little confused, and I just want to clarify so I can address the people I feel like I represent. Is this addressing the extensions um, from McClellan to Highland, from um, Highland North on 11th East, you know what I, you know, whatever that street is, I totally forgot it right now, and also to the monument, I guess, north on, is that Highland Drive? 11th yeah. East is north of 21st right. South, right? right. Yes. So, so 2B is north <coughs> to the monument. Is that I, see, I see Councilman Simonson. Do you think you, like you could elucidate? Yeah, what I mean? just, just to add a little bit, I don't know if this makes it easier or not easier, um, to, to add on to what Robin just said about the urgency. The City Council made a decision after we funded the first phase and, and did all the local match that we really wanted to get the streetcar to Highland Drive. Uh, Highland Drive is a major transit route and that provides additional connectivity. It gets us to one of the major streets that serves Sugar House. But the alternatives analysis for the first phase ended at McClellan Street, because that was the end of the right-of-way that was owned by UTA. And the nature of the streetcar changes once you get out of that existing right-of-way. And so in order to do an alternatives analysis to, to get that last half block or so, we studied and we asked the, the consultants and our city staff to study what might we, what might be what sorry what might we do beyond Highland Drive and that was kind of the extension. We don't have to decide to go anywhere beyond Highland Drive. Although, as Robin said, um, we have a lot of interest in the development community, property owners, and others that would really like to know what the intentions are. So. It's not an urgent decision, but it's a really important decision because it may signal what other things can happen if we can make more, if we can make more of that decision now beyond Highland Drive, it makes it that much easier for others to make decisions that they're trying to make as well. So that's, that's kind of the sense of urgency. Getting it to Highland Drive is really the most important thing to do right now, and we have to have an alternatives analysis to do that. But getting beyond Highland Drive is part of a longer range strategy and decision, and that's why we're struggling a little bit with short term and long term decisions. And, and, and so this is a really important conversation. And the decision may be let's get to Highland and then do a citywide transit study and decide where to go from there. That is a decision that the city council could make. Uh, it may not help property owners that are trying to make decisions, but it may get us closer to looking at what all of our needs are all over the city, on the east bench, on the west side, downtown, Sugar House, and how everything connects together. So that's why this is a very complex decision that we're making. Yeah, that's really helpful. And, and going back to your question, Sheila, and I'm gonna maybe rephrase it, let me know if I don't do it right. But I guess the question is, so does the preferred, <coughs> no, is Robin still here, did she have to go? Oh, you're still here, okay, great, thank you. <laughs> no, and, and you've been up quite a bit, so I'm, I'm glad you're seen that. I guess the question is, um, if with the proposal that has been put forward for consideration by the city council, does that lock you into all of the choices for the 2A segment, the 2B segment, and the 2C segment? And if so, could you please just quickly recap what those would be as, as, that are part of the preferred proposal that you put forward? Did that capture what you were asking? Okay, Sheila? I think I understand, but because I've got a lot of great resources in the room and this is more of a process <laughs> question, I think if the city council adopts the recommendation as it stands now, 2A, 2B, and 2C, it is locked in. Yes? Process people? Yes. Yes. Okay. And All right. Yes. So that means it would be um, that and then the sec you had a second part of the question is review, right? 2A to Highland Drive, 2B to the monument area. 2C to 1700 South. On 11. On 1100 East, yeah. So what my concern is, is 21st South headed east. Is that part of this or just out there? It's out there. We think it's a great option and something to look at maybe next or in the future. So it's not urgent that the people that we represent who live on that street be here on the 15th to address that. No. Extension up 21st East or 21st South headed East. That's what my question is. 
No. That is not part of the urgent issue of 2A, 2B, 2C. It's out there, but not necessarily urgent to be addressed on the whatever the day's coming up here. Right. <laughs> we're always happy to hear feedback about any of the alternatives, and I think you know we're getting that right now. So I wouldn't discourage any you know mm -hmm. feedback for coming in, but the decision mm -hmm. that we're asking the city council to consider is the ABC okay. that you that we showed you. Today. And not necessarily going east. Not at this time. Not at this time. So, okay. and I just want to throw that out. I think it's important that your neighbors speak up about what they want to see because we're going to protect them. So the city is recommending north, but as we saw, there's not a consensus. And I think the more people they hear from, the better because they're the ones that's what our job is to try to get people talking about it. So if they can't come on the 15th, they can still do their email comments. And they can go, and then April 23rd is the meeting of the city county building for the city council. And that meeting is extremely important. Let me read the numbers again. East on 21st South, this is trustees 9, and North on 11th East 8. Of the public, 25 wanted East on 21st South, and 19 North on 11th East. So the room is split. Right, but how many of those people live on 21st South headed east? Well, that's, no why you know, that's why your neighbors in Delaware have to speak up. That's exactly why they need to speak Okay, so um, what I want to do, I, 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 we, we, we're running toward the end of our meeting, and so, but I do want to allow time for just some very brief um, pub comments from the public on this topic. So I'm going to ask you to take less than a minute, and I'm only going to take um, two and maybe three if, if, they're, if you stay to a minute. Yes, George. Okay, I just want to emphasize that most of the small business owners in this area on 11th East going north from 21st South are against it. Most of them will move. They cannot handle the construction, even if it's done in stages. It's already two blocks backed up. They're going downhill. It'll get even worse. The property owners are upset because they're going to be losing a lot of their tenants. You can't ride a streetcar and get a vacuum cleaner. That's how bad it is. We're talking about tracks, trains running up and down 11th East. It doesn't make sense. It does make sense to possibly have the streetcar go to the best destination in the area, Sugar House Park. And that's what made the San Diego trolley successful, a great destination. In addition, there's a chance that maybe Shopko or the Olsons will pay for it. Thank you for your time. <laughs> right. um, I'm going to actually bounce back to Annalisa because I think you might have a, good re a response to this. Yeah. So please. The Sugar House Merchants Association met has been discussing this. We have representatives from all over um, the Sugar House Business District. And um, as their representative, as the chair of the organization, I do not have that specific feedback. I have people from the business district that are in favor of having the streetcar go in their area, people who are on 11th East that are also in favor of having the streetcar in their area, and some of them who are worried about what it might mean for their small business, but we do appreciate the efforts of the city of working with our businesses to make sure that whatever happens will happen for the benefit of small business all throughout our Sugar House Business District. And that's what we as a business organization want to make sure happens. Okay, thank you. Um, Just real fast. Cl mean? Clarification. Um, and this is a common misconception with the public. The tracks, it is not a tracks line. You do not build a berm. It's much cheaper to build. And this is a misconception with a lot of my neighbors that the streetcar is the same as a tracks line, and it's not. And so I just wanted to clarify that because he referred to it as a tracks line. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to do one more um, comment. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just saw uh, the comment about people living up on 21st South. I live up there, and I would much rather have, have the route go up 21st South. I don't particularly see any problem. If, if the last stop is at 17 Ds, most of that is along the Sugar House Park, and there's hardly any residential on the other side except above 15 Ds. So, but for me, I mean, you've got a lot of people at Westminster who are, who are actually living at the draw or even closer to 21st South. We don't need to draw more people from there. 
So, but for us, you know, like my wife and I sometimes walk down to Smith's. It'd be nice to take that, but coming back with a bag of groceries is tough. I know we have a bus, but uh, I, I just prefer the 20 per cell. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Well, um, thank you all for your participation. I think that went fairly well. I think we gathered a lot of input, and I want to thank you for coming. Um, we do have just a couple of other uh, items on our agenda. Uh, Councilman Simons, you presented before. I don't know if you need to present any more. Um, I, have, just, I have one other. Have okay. Two, two brief announcements. Bicycle pedestrian master plan. Thank you for doing that, Soren. I don't want to steal another if, streetcar. If, if we didn't have enough going on right. with all of this, <laughs> we are working on two citywide plans. This one is leading the way. It's the bicycle pedestrian master plan. There will be an open house next Thursday. So after the planning commission, if you have enough to do in the evenings, next Thursday <laughs> evening, at the, I believe that's at the city and county. Fourth board. floor of the library. Fourth floor of the library. Fourth floor of the library from six to eight p.m. And that will be the first open house, gathering input from citywide about how we continue to expand and develop our bicycle and pedestrian networks. Uh, I, I understand that there's also an open house that same evening on the zoning around the streetcar. Uh, at 7th East and 9th East. I haven't confirmed the location and the time. Watch closely for that. But I believe there's an open house on that issue, which obviously ties into the land use related to the first phase, which is under construction now. So I just want to make sure people are aware of those. If you have input, if you represent a neighborhood, particularly Forest Dale uh, and, uh, and east of, I guess this council doesn't go east of, or west of 7th East. But if you represent anybody in those areas that's interested in what's happening around 9th East and 7th East, uh, let them know about the open house next week. Great, and Robin, just quick. I forgot to thank Sean McDonough for preparing our, preparing our for frequently asked questions. We've, we've left a stack of FAQs by the door if you want to come up. Great, thank you.